I'm telling you. All right, and I'll be sharing my screen um, for just about the entire time. And of course, when I share my screen, I lose, there we go. Um, so my lead teacher asked me to um, do this session because I, <laughs> she thought I felt very comfortable using Padlet and Flipgrid. And um, when I asked, or when she asked me, um, you know, how things were going and why I decided to use it, it, it was because I felt there was a lack of student interaction, um, mostly because as an Encore teacher, as the media Encore teacher, I wasn't given a synchronous, synchronous learning time like um, art, music, and PE. So I didn't even have a set time where I could Zoom with students. And also seeing everyone in the school, that would have kind of been unrealistic anyway. So I wanted to try to come up with a way that students were still able to interact and engage with each other, um, even though they were so far apart. So my session goals are very um, simple. I just want you to have a better understanding of how Padlet and Flipgrid work. Um, and then also to brainstorm ways that you think you could use it in your classroom or you could take back to your teachers and um, give them some ideas as well. And just very briefly, so these are my standards, my, um, my library standards. And, and I should tell you, um, if I didn't already mention, I'm the uh, library media specialist at Hickory Elementary. I've been here for two years. And before that, I was at Smithsburg Middle for 19 years as um, an eighth grade English teacher. So the library is a little new for me, um, but I love it. I love elementary school. Um, and we had last year brand new standards, national standards. And um, if I can make this a little bigger, I was doing some lesson planning with colleagues very early on in distance learning. And um, we were trying to come up with ways. So we have this um, domain and competency called SHARE. And we were just trying to figure out how can we still reach that domain and that standard if students aren't together. Um, and then we have the, um, the shared foundation of collaboration. And that was another hurdle we thought we were going to have um, while we were distance learning. If kids aren't together in the classroom, how are we going to be able to reach that standard? So that's where the, um, the idea came um, to me to try and find something else to use rather than just Google Classroom. Um, and Zoom since I didn't have the opportunity to Zoom. So the first thing I wanted to try was Padlet, mostly because I'm familiar with it. Um, I feel like anytime I go to PD, that um, Padlet is an opportunity for me to use as an adult. Um, so I just have a very short video for you from Padlet. If you haven't used it yet, or if you don't know what it looks like, it's only a little over a minute and hopefully you can hear it. Maybe just, can you hear the sound? Yeah. Padlet is a digital pin board that lets you gather a variety of objects such as text posts, pictures, video clips, audio files, web links, and many more. The essence of the Padlet is to provide a place from where people can work on a project in a fun, easy, and interactive way. Start using Padlet by signing up for a free account. The website can be accessed at www.padlet.com. You can also search Padlet to download the Android and iOS app to get started. Once you're logged in, you can create a new wall. Here's a sample of Padlet's beginning. On a Padlet, you can simply click this plus icon or double click to add a link to an image you have found online, or you can upload a photo of your own, add photos, poems, videos, or other notes related to the topic. The blue bar at the top provides additional options to customize your Padlet's title, layout, description, and privacy settings. Information can also be accessed here. Every Padlet created, there's a link which you can share with others so you can work together. Here's a sample of a Padlet created by one user. You can visit the website's gallery at padlet.com slash about slash gallery for more inspiration. We hope you enjoy using Padlet. Okay, so the first thing I do want to say is that 
we don't have the app version of Padlet any longer because they don't offer um, a free version for educators anymore. So when you um, log into Padlet, you have to use the web version, which is, is actually easier for kids because you can just give them the link and they can click rather than having to put a join code in. Um, the only thing is with the free version, you're limited to three Padlets at a time. Um, and I've just kind of figured out that once I get to three, if I delete an old one, then I can make another one. Or um, if you just wait about a week, um, you can usually end up making more. I think I had about five or six at one point in May because I, um, I deleted some ones I had used at the beginning of the year, but then I never deleted any from distance learning and I had about six of them. So um, I, I think there are some ways around it. If not, you can just delete old ones. Um, so there's um, on the slideshow, and I will share that with you a little later, there is a longer tutorial on how to use Padlet if you want some more directions. And then I do have an article of ideas of how to use Padlet that you can take a look at, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did. So the first one was a reader response. And um, for the past two years in the library, every time um, third, fourth, and fifth, and I did only use this with third, fourth, and fifth grade, um, just because they were the only ones I knew for sure had their device at home and had easy access. So every time kids come to the library, I read them a chapter of a novel. And when school closed, I wanted to keep that consistency with them. So I had the novel with me and I started each one of my lessons each week um, with, that, with that one chapter. And when we were in the building, I always asked them, you know, think about a prediction, a connection, just, you know, your basic questions that you ask when you're reading. So I was doing that with students on um, a Google Doc and then also um, in Google Slides where I just wanted them to write down their answer. You know, what question do you have after this chapter? What was a prediction or connection you had after the chapter? And when I started thinking about that lack of interaction, I thought instead I'm gonna ask them to put their answer about the chapter into a Padlet. So, and they responded like tremendously. They had, um, I think a lot of fun doing it. So I'll just scroll through. Um, I gave them the directions on Google Classroom. I made my own little Padlet. Um, you can see down there, there's the pink plus to make your own. Um, I reminded them to put their name. When I log in, I just do the login with Google. Um, when you give kids the link, they don't have to log in. So you can see that's why it popped up as anonymous. So I, I had to keep reminding students to make sure they put their name. And then I just said, you know, give me one connection prediction question you had while I was reading the book to you. So, um, you know, th they did a really nice job. And one option you have with Padlet, let me see, I need to move our screen down there. Uh, let's see, oh, it's not giving me, there's usually an option up here for settings. Oh, it's looking like I'm not logged in. But when, when you are logged in, um, you have a settings wheel and you can, um, that's where you can change your backgrounds and do everything you need to do in Padlet. Um, one of the options is to have teacher approval first, which I highly recommend, um, you know, as, as you would with anything else. Um, and you'll see that too in Flipgrid as an option. So anytime a student um, typed their Padlet and tried, typed their answer in Padlet and tried to post, then I got a notification and then I could just go in and approve it. Um, one other option that would have shown up in the bottom here is that you could give students the, um, ability to comment on each other's, which I think would have been fantastic, but I just didn't feel like I was ready to give them that trust because um, there's no teacher approval for the comments. So I thought, you know, maybe next year or, you know, maybe if we still had like another month of school to go and I could have um, just explain my expectations face to face a little bit better, um, but there is an option to comment, which I think is what have what would have taken that. Um, when I think back to my standards, standards it would have taken that sharing to like a higher level because students then could um, you know ask each other questions, they can comment on someone else's predictions and things like that. So that is an option for you in Padlet, but it doesn't have teacher approval. So, and I even emailed their help desk and asked if there was anybody around that, but I, I didn't get a whole lot of feedback from them. Um, so let me close this one out. And so I did this for a couple of weeks. And like I said, it was, it was pretty successful. Um, my next one, we did some makerspace activities. I had, I gave them an origami activity. 
and the direction in Google Classroom was take a picture of what you made and post your picture for me in Google Classroom and then go to the Padlet and give me a response in writing. And I, and I had a few kids do that and then one student ended up posting his picture of his origami and I thought, oh my gosh, why did I not just ask them that in the first place? Then they can actually see what um, their classmates are making. So we were, we've been learning, we were learning about dogs. And so I found some dog origami and this was the first kid, it was so adorable. He made his two examples of origami and he took the picture with his own little dog. I just, I thought that was awesome. And once he posted his picture, everyone else started posting theirs. And I thought, you know, they are so excited to share what they make because they're not getting that opportunity um, since we're not in the classroom. So it was, it was, a, it was a great time for them to um, have some fun and I think really be excited about what they were doing. And then the last one, one of my very last assignments was another makerspace. And I gave them a link to an ebook um, and it, it was just called Paper Projects. And I, I said, you know, look through the book, pick something that you want to make, take a picture of it, this time post it on Padlet, and then just, you know, write a quick reflection about how things did or how things went for you. So they came up with some pretty cool projects. And, um, and they were pretty honest. This is probably my favorite one here from Brendan. He said he made a high five bookmarker. It was fairly easy to do, but the hardest part was curling the little pieces of paper. You can see that right there. And we had no clue how to tape them down. So I thought that was a pretty honest opinion. He's a third grader. Um, and the directions in the book did say to like cut a thin piece of paper and you know wrap it around a pencil and make this like curly cue. Um, these other ones are lanterns. Some of them had the uh, little electric tea lights. Um, and it, I just thought it was a really nice way for them to share what they were doing. So that is Padlet. And, you know, and like I said, if, if I had a little more time or if I had used it more in the classroom before this, um, I would have probably trusted them a little more to comment on each other's posts. But I, I just, I wasn't quite there. But that is definitely an option that I think could work really well should we be in a distance learning situation. Again, um, anything about Padlet before I go on? I feel like I talked for a while. I think you, you hit a good point with being able to show the pictures. Like I used Padlet in class, but I really used it just as like a post-it post yeah. note to answer the question. Uh -huh. And with them not having the ability to interact and I mean, if anybody's held a Zoom call, you all know that all they want to do is see each other and talk with each other. So it was a great piece to be able to pull that picture in. Mm -hmm. um, I like that a lot. Yeah, it, it was it was fun. And they were, I noticed they did their work faster than when I was just asking them to, you know, type on this Google Doc or um, just type your answer in the Google Classroom comment section. Um, kids had their work done right away. I, I think they were so excited to share with each other and then they were just that much more engaged. And they checked, I'm sure they checked back. They didn't just post and, <laughs> post and run, like they wanted to check back and see what their classmates were doing. Yes. So. Yeah, I like that you can post the picture and stuff because I just had them um, send it to me on a Google Doc, but of course they couldn't see each other's. Right. Mm -hmm. So I saw it, but yeah, there was no interaction between them at all. Right. I like that they can all see each other's. Yes. And, and that is, you know, I was, I was looking at a friend's assignment that he sent me. Um, he's not a, he's not a media specialist, but he's a, he's a, a technology teacher at Pangborn, I think. And, um, you know, he was, he was talking in this lesson about how he's, seeing everyone's videos and everyone's pictures and how much he enjoyed seeing all the work from his students and he's telling that to his students and i thought gosh i bet they would they want to see what's so great you know that all of their classmates and their friends are doing so um i'm going to go ahead and show you flipgrid and it also has a very short video at the beginning i i'm not gonna lie flipgrid is fairly new to me and i had a little bit of trouble with it but oh that is loud by entering the code from your teacher in the free iOS or Android app. Enter the code at flipgrid.com on any web browser. You'll be asked to log in with your school email address or student ID from your teacher. Now that you're in, let's tap that green plus to record a video.
In Flipgrid, you can pause your video to record multiple segments, add filters, turn on whiteboard mode, and more. Once you're done, you can review and edit your video or record more. When you're ready to share, tap next and take a selfie. This is the image that will appear on the grid. Click submit to share your video to the grid, and that's it. Your video is on the grid. Okay, so that's, that's just a quick intro. Um, I do have on the slides that I'll share with you, I have a full to, uh, tutorial on how to use Flipgrid. And then I did find another article for Flipgrid of different ideas. I, I just, I, I think there's like, it's unlimited of how you can use both of these. Um, the first one I have to show you is actually a sample of what my principal did. Um, I, we noticed right away, we're a Title I school, and we noticed right away that students were just not engaged as much as they could at the beginning of distance learning, you know, after the first few weeks. And um, just the struggle to scroll through Google Classroom and find assignments that were turned in, and did kids forget to turn in assignments, you know, then you're like constantly scrolling, scrolling. So we thought Flipgrid could be nice. Um, that way students didn't have to turn in anything on Google Classroom. When they submit their video in Flipgrid, you get an email. So there's like that immediate notification that someone turned their work in, and you don't have to search through Google Classroom especially for me because I didn't have my own classroom in Google. I was in the teachers. Um, so in 14 different teacher classrooms, I had to turn off my notifications or else I was getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them every day. So for an Encore teacher, this was a nice option. Um, you know, I didn't have to go in and search for everything. I went right to the email that Flipgrid sent me. So this is my principal and he thought he would just help introduce it when we were first trying it out. He just wanted kids to share something that they have been talking about in distance learning, make a short video. Um, you can see there's that plus sign. So when you give kids the link, um, they just tap on it. They have to sign in with Google and um, it is moderated. So just like Padlet, it's gonna um, give you the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to watch it first as the teacher before it's posted for anyone else to see. Uh, let me get rid of that. Sorry about that. Um, and he had a pretty good turnout. We have a very small school, um, but he had a lot of kids either share their book or share what they've been doing for fun while school was closed or what they had been doing um, uh, what they've been learning sorry let's see maybe i'll have one to share let's see if what regan said good morning uh i'm good afternoon i so what i have been learning over this whole thing um i've been learning about um budgets and financial plans and how to make budget and it's, i think it's really fun in my opinion and we have just been talking about budgets and how, like, how to make a budget. Um, today we talked about budgets on a chart for doing it. So, yeah, that's basically all. So, bye. So that was Regan. Just a quick um, summary of what she's been doing. <laughs> I hadn't watched that one before. That was funny. A little TikTok move at the end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. And um, and I have one, our fourth grade teacher tried it and she only had one response, um, but she did, she kept it optional. And she used it strictly for book sharing, which, you know, obviously as a librarian, that's where my, you know, thought was as well. So she was just going to, she asked students to share a book they've been reading. And um, she had done one herself, which I thought was important that they see the teacher video. And then she had one student who shared. Now, she did not make hers moderated, which, you know, in the future, I would probably encourage her to do that just so you have the opportunity to watch it first to make sure everything is in there and appropriate. Um, and then for mine, I use mine um, for research to report facts um, on research. We had been studying um, different kinds of dogs and dogs for pets, different dog breeds. And then I had the students read um, one of four books in Capstone Interactive about working dogs. So there were military dogs, police dogs, 
therapy dogs and, and one other. And I wanted them to just have a creative, engaging way to share what they learned. I just asked simply for three facts about what you learned from your book. Um, and I also thought of it as almost being like a jigsaw so that when their classmates watch their video, you know, they might have, they might not have read the same book, but they're still learning something about one of the other dogs because they're getting to see the video. So I had a pretty good turnout with this one. Um, let's see. They were very quiet though. Some of them had really soft voices. Let's see. I think Maddox was my first one. We'll see what he has to say. My book is called Police Dogs. Police Dogs starts training at two years old and work until they are eight or nine years old. Police Dogs are called K-9 Dogs. There are over 50 million police dogs in the USA. There's 50,000. Sorry about that. All right. So it just gave them the opportunity to share what they uh, learned in a different way. Again, rather than writing it down for me or rather than putting in the comments, um, they were all super excited. And I did like most of the kids had their facts written on a piece of paper and they were reading from it, which I thought, um, you know, kudos to them that they really wanted to be prepared. Now I did have, I had a lot of students who did not want to make a video. They were super shy and they said, can I just type my facts for you? And I said, fine, of course, you know, that's fine. But um, a majority of them who completed the assignment did want to do the, the video. So um, the only suggestion that I have for you guys though, is if, um, if they're using iPads, which all elementary kids are, I started off by just giving them the link and, you know, and our lead teachers were like, it's so simple. Just give them the link. But, and it is, but because they're using an iPad, they still have to download the app first. And it kind of, so that kind of added an extra step and confused a lot of them because when they clicked on my link, they got a pop-up that said, you need this app. And so then they had to leave and go to self-service, download the app. And then when they tried the link again, it said, you know, then it even still asked them, do you want to use the app version? So my suggestion would be, um, instead of giving them the link, give them the join code. So up here in the corner, you can see this code. Um, have them have them enter in through the app rather than just clicking on a link and then they just have to put in the code and it's so much easier it, it's less steps and for elementary kids it's just much less confusing so but if, if but if anyone is watching this who has secondary or they're on um, chromebooks or my kids who i knew were using their parents laptops at home they didn't have any trouble with the link it just directly took them there but just the um the ipad was just a tiny bit tricky so that is it. <laughs> I feel like I talked and talked. Um, if you have any questions or I thought if you have any ideas of how you might think about, um, you know, how you would, would use one of these or if there's anything you want to share, um, I am, I'm looking for, for ways to possibly use it if we have to in the future. Stop with. your talking, McCallion. <laughs> Don't you, I'm, uh, just, I'm just thinking ahead. Uh huh. I'm thinking ahead. Um, you, you, you mentioned that a couple of kids were shy and didn't want to do videos. Mine were the same, like a couple of mine were the same way. But I think it's just a matter of that they're not used to it. Yeah. You know, it's so like if we can get them back, like, and I know my kids are in Frederick County and they've already sent out like a survey asking, like, here are three options. And only one of them was like, go back full time. Um, if we can get them back even for a day or two or two days a week or whatever the case may be and introduce it and like the same as anything, model what it looks like. Yes. That you're not TikTok dancing throughout your video or, <laughs> you yeah. know, or you're talking to the camera or it's close enough because the iPads do get very quiet. Mm -hmm. I think it will be a fantastic tool, especially for those kids who you sit down and you talk to them about a book and they can talk your ear off. You give them a pencil and they're like, I have nothing. So I think it's a great way to integrate all kinds of learners. 
Yes. Well, and I noticed too, so the students who made a video for my principal um, a few weeks before, they, they were the ones who had no problem. They jumped right on and they made their video right away. So I think it's, that's a good thought as far as, you know, let them practice first. And I like then what the fourth grade teacher was doing. She was just going to use it as a practice before she actually used it for yeah. um, assessment. So just kind of an exploration it. of it. Yeah. For world, Re I think it was World Read Aloud Day. Um, there, we asked a bunch of different people to um, record just short stories that, that the teachers could play. When I was in a, um, a K through five school, we also did um, on Flipgrid had different people record videos to um, wish the guy, wish wish the kids luck on on their testing. So we had like Dr. Michael sent them a message on Flipgrid and some of the people at the board um, recorded little messages just to say, you know, good luck, you can do it and their former teachers. And so that was, that was kind of a neat way to use Flipgrid too. Oh, definitely, definitely. Allison, do you think you could, I mean, can you see them like recording some of their artwork maybe, something that they create? Yeah. And then My job development kids, definitely. Um, and I think even because some of the parents for the Marshall Street kids, they sent me like, the kid would have the like, would like be holding the thing. They'd send me a picture of like the, you know, the student holding the work um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I think even they would have definitely like probably got them on there. Um, and I can see it would have been so much more interactive. Cause I mean, I zoomed with my job development kids, but I mean, I had a lot of them show up at the beginning and then it just filtered off. But I think that would have definitely helped them seeing each other's work and seeing mm -hmm. what each other were doing. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and to get an idea, you know, just as a springboard for kids, if they need ideas or, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, if they're feeling shy and um, they want to see what someone else did first. Right. That's I can see why the work. teachers were using it. I just, I couldn't handle one more thing in my brain to learn <laughs> during all of that. I just couldn't like put it off. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that was the sentiment in my building too. Um, I think teachers, saw easily the value of it but it was you know just that overwhelming situation we were in um and i thought you know i'm gonna go ahead and try what have i got to lose so <laughs> it, it was like i said it was kind of a disaster at first for the for the first few days i had a lot of messages of we can't get flipgrid to work and it was just that trick of having to down and i didn't know that because i was making it on you know my laptop so i didn't know anything about right. The app I think person. that was the other, like I had a lot my first week just with Google Classroom. I had all these parents, you know, saying they couldn't get stuff onto the documents and they, where were they, where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. So that was a big, yeah, that was a big thing too. But I think it might've been even simpler because once you figured it out, then what they needed to do, it was simple. Whereas I still am, they figured it out, but I don't know how they did it. I mean, I kept getting stuff. I just kept saying, email it to me if you need to, email it to me if you need to. Which I think is also, I'm just sitting here kind of thinking, because I had the same thing with Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. And I had a student iPad here at home, so I would hack into whoever was having an issue. I'd just sign in as the kid, and then I would take screenshots and, like, annotate the screenshot. I'm like, push mm -hmm. this button that you see. So I'm wondering if you could do, like, a Flipgrid video mm -hmm. for this is how you log into Flipgrid, or this is what I'm expecting of you. Like, thinking about art, Allison, like, I'm, I want you to create a piece that has, and you could telling them as opposed to like a written right. direction you could sit there at your kitchen table and tell them and be like remember we're doing straight lines and whatever I think yeah seeing it seeing you and hearing you versus just having the text would really bring right. them in yeah I had a lot of trouble I, yeah just connecting with them I think either of these would be I might have a fun summer trying to figure these out <laughs> good good I'm glad well, and Erin, I like that idea for directions too, because I know we were all using Screencastify to make directions or, you know, on our cell phone over an iPad to do, and just the time it takes to upload that is ridiculous. So it would have been so much faster to do it with Flipgrid. Um, I think that would have eliminated a lot of time that you have to sit waiting for things to upload. It's just a huge learning curve. And I, one of you, one of you said it that I couldn't handle like another thing at the beginning and I've, I saw Flipgrid and, and that first week when the kids were doing like whatever the board gave out, 
And then they said, you know, teachers, this is your week to get ready. And I'm like, there's 17 million things. So <laughs> this will be one to put on the, put on the calendar to try. So I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was very good. Thank you. You are very welcome. Um, I have the link to my Google slide presentation that I wanted to share with you, but I don't have um, an option for comments or the little chat room right now. I saw that. Um, why don't you put that link for your slideshow on the same one that you're going to put the recording of this uh, in your Google Zoom? So then I, was gonna, I think it's already there. Okay. So if you, if you want to um, see any of those samples or um, links to the tutorials, check back on that page um, from the main document where all the PD is housed because it's already on there. And I, I don't know, sometimes the chat pops up and today it's just not there. So it, that's, uh, it, it'll be on that other Google Doc instead. So it'll be there for everybody else that it'll wants to watch there everything for everyone too. Else. <laughs> yep. All right. Any other thoughts or questions? I greatly appreciate your time, ladies. I know this was the last session on the last day and I appreciate it. We made it to Friday. Yay. <laughs> Good information. Thanks for being willing to present. Oh, yeah. you're very welcome. You're very, this was a nice break from iPads and shelving books for me. So <laughs> we had drop off this week. So I've been oh, knee, yeah. deep, knee deep in iPads. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thanks for coming and have a fantastic weekend. I, you, I appreciate your attendance. So, all right. Thanks. See you later.